Hello everyone and welcome to today's educational video covering what you should know about DNA test kits, specifically about the at-home variety. In a nutshell, these are DNA test kits that you purchase and then get shipped to your home. You swab your cheek to gather your DNA sample, mail it in, and in a few weeks you'll receive lots of information about your family history and potentially your health. It's a popular activity and people have even been giving these DNA test kits as gifts to their loved ones and friends. However, there are some things you should keep in mind before you or someone you care about hands over any DNA material, which is full of highly sensitive data, data that is unique and specific to you. Our information for today's video comes from the FTC, as well as an article posted on linkedin.com called Your DNA and Data Breaches, The Reality and Risks. As always, our source links are available at the bottom of the video's description. I encourage you to go and check our sources out for yourself. So let's get started. The FTC provides lots of great tips for discerning from a security standpoint whether a DNA test kit is a good purchase. Tip number one, in addition to price and performance, consider privacy to be a crucial comparison point in deciding which kit to buy. As I just mentioned, your tiny swab of saliva holds so much personal and highly sensitive information about you, and you can't exactly change your DNA. So if your unique information is put out there and sold on the dark web, that's it. Unfortunately, there's no calling your bank to get sent another DNA card. The DNA and Data Breaches article on LinkedIn also points out that if your DNA reveals a likelihood for certain conditions and diseases like dementia or type 2 diabetes, bad actors, meaning dishonest companies and or individual hackers, could target you and use that data against you. Spend time on the test kit company's website and read through their privacy practice. The FTC provides a few good questions to ask yourself. Do they share users' information with other companies? If so, that means the safety of your sensitive data could be compromised if that other company gets breached. Do they offer a privacy dashboard or other tools for users to select options offering more privacy than the standard? A one-size-fits-all mentality is not ideal when it comes to your sensitive biometric data. And the third question, can you delete your information if you ever decide you want to? The answer should be yes. Okay, tip number two. Whether it's you or a family member who's going to be taking the DNA test, make sure you have some strong privacy setting guidelines um, in place. So a strong, unique password, meaning not a reused password. The company called 23andMe, a genetic testing company, revealed near the end of 2023 that they had been breached and a major portion of their users' private genetic info and the info of their potential relatives as well had been accessed by the hackers. 23andMe revealed that the hackers were ultimately successful because some of the 23andMe users had reused passwords from other sites. What does this mean exactly? That some 23andMe customers had unknowingly been victims of an earlier security breach through another company or organization, meaning that their passwords and login information had been exposed to hackers. Meanwhile, those same 23andMe customers chose to use the same password on 23andMe as they had on that breached account. So the 23andMe hackers tried the customer's passwords gained in the first breach, and it got them in, thereby gaining them on some level the genetic information of roughly 6 million 23andMe users. Take advantage of multi-factor authentication, sometimes called two-factor authentication. This adds extra security by having, having consumers use a password, that's your first factor, plus another verification method to get access. That's your second factor. So your password and then a second factor. Sometimes this means the website will email a code to the registered email address, or they will text a security code to the person's phone number. Although this method is potentially more susceptible sim to SIM swapping scams. 
There are also apps and even separate devices, something you plug into or hover over your phone or laptop that can offer verification. The test kit may not offer multi-factor authentication right out of the box. This may mean you taking the initiative and going into your account settings on the company's website and searching around for a privacy or security section. Then checking a box to sign up for multi-factor authentication and following the setup steps. And be sure you actually give the company a second factor. I've seen people kicked out of their accounts on Facebook and other websites because they didn't take the time to set up multi-factor ahead of time. And then they had no way of getting back into their account when they forgot their password. Also be sure your second factor is something you can actually check. Don't give an email address you don't go into regularly and don't remember the password for. Provide something that's fairly easy for you to access, an email address you check regularly on your phone, for example, in order to be able to get back into your account if that's ever necessary. And tip number three, always keep in mind what's at risk. As we mentioned earlier, DNA is not something you can just change if a bad actor gets a hold of it. And it also has information not only about you, but also the people you're related to. Imagine if your kids, grandkids, or other young family members' DNA info is leaked in a cyber attack, and they have to deal with the repercussions of that for many years into the future through no fault of their own. Cyber attacks happen all the time, even if a company promises not to share the data they have on you with other companies and entities without your permission. Data theft and cyber attacks are a reality of life today, and all businesses have to have a plan to defend against them. However, your DNA and that of your family members is especially unique and personal information. Treat it wisely. If you feel a genetic testing company isn't fulfilling its promises, you can always, re always report your concern to the FTC. The source page at the bottom of the video's description offers information on how to do that. Okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.